Hi everybody, welcome back. I've missed you guys. I have a great topic today and I'm just gonna jump into it. Five weeks ago, I came across a story about the Boston Public School System getting rid of the current map that they use. And apparently most American classrooms as well as world atlases are based on a, uh, a Mercator projection. Um, and this projection actually portrays uh, countries closer to the equator as being their real size, but countries farther away, namely Europe, uh, being larger than these countries that are located closer to the equator. So th this um, Mercator projection was actually created in 1569 by a cartographer named Gerardus Mercator. And the Boston Public School System wants to get away from using this map because they think it unconsciously creates bias in students' minds. So the map that they are choosing to use instead is a Peter projection, Peter's projection, I'm sorry. And this was introduced in 1974 by a German historian, Arno Peters, as it has a more accurate alternative to the Mercator. So the Peters projection actually um, illustrates, illustrates continents and the sizes that they really are. Um, so that is the, the option that the Boston Public School System is deciding to go with. And I came across the story and I thought this was such a cool segue into the rest of um, my show. So during some of the readings that I've been doing, I came across the fact that, uh, well, number one, Africa is the second largest continent in the world, uh, Asia being the first largest continent in the world. And I didn't honestly realize how large Africa was until I read a fact that the Sahara Desert alone is one and a half times the size of the United States. Um, so that was one thing I found interesting that was kind of funny how I had came across hearing that news story about the about the uh, Mercator uh, projection and the maps that we all use and how it, little things uh, over the years over hundreds of years have been used and little staples to make Africa smaller or seem like it's not as important to the rest of the world and I came across this awesome book at the library called um, the destruction of black civilization and i only got to like the first 50 pages of it before i decided i wanted to buy this book for myself but i thought it was a great way of sharing some facts um about some questions that i've always asked uh we hear that africans were um one of the first civilizations and how uh, africans were at one time great mathematicians and scientists and uh, even, uh, uh, you know, writing, um, speaking of hieroglyphics found in Egypt. And it made me always wonder, like, um, we hear that we all, all also come from kings and queens. But, like, who are these kings and queens and, like, what happened to us? I always wondered what happened to Africans. And I came across this book and it, it gave me some answers that made sense to me. And I just wanted to share some of these theories with you guys. So... First and foremost, we have Northern Africa, uh, particularly Egypt. A lot of us, I think, have come to thinking of Egypt as not really even being a part of Africa because a lot of the times most of the people are lighter skin and look more Middle Eastern and not necessarily traditionally African in the terms of what we might think of as, uh, as African. So it has some explanations for that. Without going into a lot of detail, I want to save that maybe for a future show, but I'm um, just going to touch on a few things. So I read, I learned reading this book that uh, initially um, there were a group of people called Phoenicians and they were, let me see, I have to refer to my notes. They were traders by sea and they lived along the coastal region. And um, right now, that area would be between Lebanon, Syria, and Israel. 
and eventually these people began to settle in parts of North Africa. And initially they just settled as, as traders um, and, you know, people that were interested in commerce. However, as time goes on, um, as always, there's always a nasty group in the bunch that decides that they would like to take over or they would like to inhabit or more <laughs> of, of a space than what they should. So um, they 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 go to war with Africans and they become more like invaders instead of settlers, instead of peaceful settlers as initially they were. And there are a mixing between the Africans and some of these um, settlers that live along the Asian border between Asia and, and Africa. So you have these Asian intruders now and um, they are intermingling with the Africans and these babies that are being produced are not considered Africa, African. They uh, perceive themselves as being white. Um, which is a different way of thinking, I think, than most black Americans would, would think because we have grown accustomed to something known as the one drop rule in this country. But most countries or most societies are patriarchal and you are whatever your father is. So at that time, if your father is an Asian, then more than likely, right, you're technically Asian or white at this time even though your mother is african so you have a new a new a new people evolving with looser texture hair and lighter skin and they don't consider themselves to be african which is going to cause of course some rift between the descendants of these of these people and these darker skinned africans um not only that but of course the asian invaders are also using other africans to go to war and help dominate other Africans. So that that's another strike uh, against black civilization right there. Um, another thing that happened was that as the world evolved, unfortunately, Africans did not evolve with the world. Um, partly because of these Asian um, invaders, they started to push some of the inhabitants that were along the northern border or the northern countries of Africa inland. So these Africans are now being cut off from the west of, rest of the world as far as trade and communicating and um, with the rest of the world, right? So they're, they're cut off in that, in that, one, that one sense. Also, um, as I said, we're, Africans were not keeping up with the rest of the world and that at one time, of course, slavery was um, an institution reserved for no specific race or gender or real reason. It was a uh, something that was just very commonly used, and it wasn't the same state of slavery that us Black Americans would think uh, or know it to be, as harsh as it became. So when African tribes would go to war together or against each other, they will often sell the people that they sold, uh, the people that they uh, were rival to, to these Asians. Once again, you're just building up, um, you're just building up your, your opponents, um, you're building up their military. So we hadn't come out of that, that frame of mind of getting away from that. So it was very easy that once the Europeans came along, African chiefs were selling uh, other Africans to Europeans. Um, and of course, that, that, of course that down spiraled very quickly into uh, the state of slavery that we have grown to know more recently in, um, in history. So I don't want to lose my train of thought. I have so many things going on in my mind. So uh, first, the Africans are cut off from the rest of the world by Northern Africa becoming more uh, populated by Asians and these new um, mixtures of uh, uh, between these Africans and, and, and Asians. That's number one. Number two, you have the Africans going to war with each other and selling each other out. That's number two. Uh, of course, we have the Europeans uh, that invaded uh, eventually. And last but not least, we also have nature. Uh, like I said, uh, the Sahara Desert is one and a half times larger than America. Uh, 
nature has its own way of turning against humans, right? We see that today, how famine and drought and tornadoes and earthquakes and all kinds of natural disasters can really affect our daily life. But thousands and thousands of years ago, at one time, the Sahara Desert was actually uh, inhabited with life. Um, but by 2000 BC, the Sahara Desert was totally dried out. So, um, and there were also some other events that happened in Africa that made people disperse in the way they did. They split up and then they become, um, they become uh, strangers to each other. They don't speak the same language. They now speak new, different dialects. They now, um, um, they now have like a different culture and, and practice different things. So they be kind of, they kind of become strangers amongst each other. Then they also, um, and looking for food and water and trying to escape invaders, they are always traveling. They're migrating. So. It's funny, I've come across a picture, maybe from like the 12th century, of a of a building that was made out of like cement or stone. And I was a little surprised, unfortunately, like embarrassed to say I was kind of surprised because I was just think of Africa, even now, with the little the little bit that I know about Africa, um, just think about huts, right? And the reason, it makes sense, the reason for these huts, you wouldn't build a permanent dwelling if you're in fear that you may have to move for a shortage of food or shortage of water or running from a um a tribe uh, a rival tribe or some other invader so i thought those were all interesting points that led to the breakdown of black civilization and what happened to us and how we became so weak and a lot of it honestly comes from us not being able to unite and that's something that for hundreds of years, different uh, black leaders have always preached that we should be united and it's always been used against us by uh, different people and, and used against us very, very well. So uh, one of the pitfalls among, amongst our division, of course, is always is used as color, light against dark. Even before uh, the Willie Lynch letters, um, apparently, uh, lighter skinned black people known as uh, uh, not um, associating themselves as being African can cause a problem with people who look more African and do claim to be African. So um, colorism is one of those systems. Of course, me being a darker skinned woman, I always have hated. So it was really crazy and interesting to learn how far back thousands of years that has played into um, the destruction of how great the black man and black woman once was. So I look forward to reading some more and sharing with you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm sure there's something I probably forgot because this topic has been rumbling around in my mind for the last three or four weeks. Um, There's a lot of information and different things I was reading. I kind of wanted to put it together as seamlessly as I could to deliver to you. So I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back. Um, and thank you for subscribing and we'll see what we can get into next time. Bye.